Hello from The Daily Dad. I am here in Las Vegas and at the newly opened Fountain Blue. It's late August 2024, and this lovely resort has only been open for about six months. It's huge, like every other mega resort here on the Strip, so I'm getting a little hungry from all this walking around and am in the mood for a good steak. So today on The Daily Dad, we're going to visit Don's Prime here at the Fountain Blue, and that means that you get to come along for the ride too. So let's grab a seat at the bar and start our four-star dining experience. It's Don's Prime for dinner tonight on The Daily Dad. I'm going to say, as we get started by looking at the menu, that just as filet mignon is generally considered the best cut of beef, steakhouses are considered the filet mignon of a resort's mm, group of restaurants. So the bar for this review will be set higher, and I want to forewarn you then that reviews for a steakhouse might seem a bit tough. That said, you have so many steakhouse choices in Las Vegas, and you have so many restaurant choices that are not steakhouses that also do make a great steak. So the question we'll want to ask here is this, does this steakhouse really stand out or not? So let's finish skimming through the dinner menu and get started. And oh man, this is a great start actually. Check this out. It is monkey bread. It's pull apart bread. It's right out of the oven and absolutely delicious bread. Wow, this is like the unicorn of bread. Really a myth in my mind until now. It's certainly a banger of a way to kick off dinner. So a nice juicy filet mignon is really my go-to at a steakhouse. I don't eat much, so rib eye cuts, prime rib, porterhouses, bone in anything is too much for just myself. Thus, a nine ounce filet is usually the perfect size for me. And this one is as good as any filet that I've had in any other fine steakhouse. Flavorful and tender and just the right amount of seasoning along the exterior. It sits on several half spears of asparagus. So you're getting some veg with your meal and a trumpet mushroom sits atop the filet. Now, as you can tell, I did add an accompaniment, the king crab Oscar topping. You know, for some reason, my tummy can always make room for king crab, and this is delicious. Like having your favorite beer after a hard day's work. It just feels so right. Mmm. Now, for my side dish, I chose asparagus. What, more asparagus? Here's where I am going to give Don's Prime a demerit. I think, as I did not know, and it wasn't in the description that the filet would come with asparagus, the bartender, who was my server, should have mentioned that. Excuse me, but your filet will already come with a few spears of asparagus. Uh, could I recommend instead the mushrooms? You know, that's what four-star dining experiences should be about, right? But now I have an abundance of asparagus. Anyway, could I make a suggestion here? Let's get rid of the Parmesan crisp and add a sauce instead. Uh, perhaps a dill butter sauce, maybe hollandaise sauce, or maybe a Dijon mustard sauce. So uh, I'm not really a fan of how this asparagus dish is presented. Speaking of not being a fan, I have to comment on the amount of, or actually the lack of space you have here at the bar. I have to say that in all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, the bar space here is annoyingly small. There isn't a foot rail, so if you are a bit on the shorter side, your feet are just going to dangle from the bar stool. There really isn't much space to maneuver your legs under the bar, and the bar top area itself has barely enough room for your main course and your drink and your silverware. It just became distracting. Uh, for me, it was so distracting and annoying that I didn't really feel like sticking around for dessert, although the options do look very tasty. Maybe that's my loss. But in any case, I did feel somewhat claustrophobic, so I felt like I needed to get some air. 
I thought the main dining area to also be small. I counted maybe 20 tables. In fact, that would explain why this place looked full on a Monday night at 5.30 p.m. Sure, maybe part of it could be its popularity, but I think it has more to do with the fact that this restaurant has a very small footprint. So if you do plan to eat here, but not at the bar, uh, reservations are probably necessary. Did I very much enjoy the filet with the accompanying king crab? Oh, absolutely, yes. Did I enjoy the accompanying dining experience? Eh, my experience was meh. And at these prices, you deserve excellence from the food to the experience and beyond. By no means, though, is this the fault of the bartender and servers. Lordy, it's nonstop for them, even on a Monday night. And there was only one bartender when I sat down, and he had to serve the entire bar area, as well as push out drink orders for the entire restaurant. Uh, anyway, I'm glad that I disabled the comments section because you may not like what I'm going to say, despite my earlier disclosure that reviews for steakhouses are going to be extra tough. Uh, but if you are not staying at the Fountain Blue, there is no reason to make a special trip to Don's Prime to check it out. Uh, if you are staying at the Fountain Blue and you are a solo diner and kind of in a hurry, then sure, why not? This is the only steakhouse on the property and you're probably just looking more so for a satisfying meal than really anything else. If you are a party of five or more, and a hotel guest, uh, I feel that the tables aren't really designed to comfortably seat more than four. Uh, finally, at these prices, if you are looking for excellent food as well as an excellent experience, I'm going to recommend that you invest in a five minute taxi ride and head north over to the Golden Steer where the food will be just as good, the value will be a little better, and the overall experience will be great. Now, admittedly, I had greater expectations, but Don's Prime as a dining experience is more skirt steak than filet, and so it gets two stars out of four. Hey, this is the Daily Dad reminding you to try new things and to be happy.